commissioners, I'd like to announce that prior to this meeting, we had an executive session on personnel matters. At this time, Mr. Gentile, would you please call the roll? Certainly, uh, Mr. D'Amelio. He is here, I think he's in the back room. Uh, Mr. Oliva? Here. Mr. McCluskey? Here. Mr. Siegel? Here. Mr. Lewis? Here. Mr. McGarity? Here. Dr. Hart? Here. Mr. Holmes is not here this evening, he's out of town. And Mr. Wexler? Thank you. At this time, I'd like all to stand. And in lieu of our guests, I'll uh, have our new, newest fire chief in the township, Chief Michael Norman, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Who's doing these? Is this? We have several happy things to do, several proclamations. The first is Dr. Cecilia Helinski. Dr. Hart doing it? I think uh, Jimmy. Jimmy? We have uh, Henry Eichmann, president of the health board, and Nancy uh, Guerrera, director of health. Here's our plaque. Whereas the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, Delaware, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania takes great pride in those who reach out and serve their community. Whereas Haverford Township recognizes and appreciates Cecilia A. Helinski, DVM, for her extensive civil service to our community. And whereas Dr. Helinski, who has volunteered for the Haverford Township Raisi, rabies inoculations clinic for many years by providing rabies shots for residents, pets, and whereas Dr. Helinski, in addition to her volunteer work, has been an active member of the Health Advisory Board for the past 14 years and also providing advice and expertise to township officials on health and safety issues. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of Commissioners, the Township of Haverford, Residents extend a grateful thank you for Dr. C Cecilia Helinski for many, many years of dedicated service. Proclaim this 13th day of November 2018, Township of Haverford Board of Commissioner by William Wexler, President, Larry Holmes, Vice President. Dr. <laughs> Thank the township for this honor, and I have to thank the people that came before me, Dr. Mark Bronstein and Dr. Lillian Giuliani, who are the ones that really you know, kind of established the rabies clinic in the township, and I was more than happy to uh, join in. So it's certainly a pleasure to, to uh, serve the township in this capacity. Thanks. <clears throat> I'd like to also, I forgot, Owen, our animal warden, he's here tonight with us. He came along, and uh, a lot of people don't realize, but the commissioner's meetings and the work that we have, the next night is the health board meetings, and Dr. Belinsky has been coming to those for the last 14 years and been a great help to the Haverford Township Health Board. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, now Jerry Hart is going to... Do a proclamation. Okay. The second proclamation is for Mrs. Nina Bronstein. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Hart. <laughs> oh, thank you. Figure out how to work it there. Whereas the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, takes pride in those that reach out and serve their community. And whereas Haverford Township recognizes and appreciates Nina Bronstein for her extensive civic service to our community. And whereas Nina, along with her family and staff at Iman's Bronstein Veterinary Hospital, has volunteered for Haverford Township Rabies Inoculation Clinic for the past 30 years. 
by providing rabies shots for residents' pets, and whereas Nina and staff have cared for residents' pets and to continue to accept stray pets picked up by the Haverford Police and Animal Control and have placed animals left unclaimed into new homes. And whereas Nina and staff has continued to provide advice and expertise to township officials for the health and safety of township residents. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners and township residents extend a grateful thank you to Nina Bronstein for your many years of dedicated service, proclaimed this 13th day of November 2018, Township of Haverford Board of Commissioners by William Wexler, President, and Larry Holmes, Vice President. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Nate Bronstein. I was asked to just say a few words on behalf of my mom, Nina Bronstein, as well as Kathy Wilson, and of course, Owen O'Connell, who um, has been such a big player and piece of the work that we have done for more than 30 years now. Um, I think we all share an understanding that many members of our community have more than two legs, and in pursuit of that mission, We've come out into the community, worked with the rabies clinics, and the day-to-day -day work for our community. It has been an honor, and we would like to thank this uh, township for the collaboration and this recognition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to ask Commissioner D'Amelio and Dr. Hart to join me out front. Uh, we have a special event happening here. Uh, it's near to at least Steve's and my heart's as members of the Noah Fire Company, Chief Michael C. Norman has just stepped down as the chief after, I don't know how many, he's been the chief ever since I've been a member, and I've been there since 2001 as a firefighter. I think Steve and I have been there about the same time, 2000, 2001. So my entire life at the fire station has been under his tutelage, a great commander. And tonight we were led in the Pledge of Allegiance by his son, Michael E. Norman, who was elected by his peers to be the chief and approved by the board of directors of the fire company to be the chief for the next two years. So tradition continues in the family, but there's long years of service and Chief, I'd like you to step up here with us, Dr. Hart and Steve and myself. And we have a proclamation and a gift for you. Whereas the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, wish to recognize and honor Michael C. Norman. Whereas Chief Norman joined the Manoa Fire Company in 1965 and has been active since. And whereas in 1978 he was elected Chief and held that term until 1984, he returned to Chief in 1998 and held the position until 2018, just a few weeks ago. And whereas over his years of service, Chief Norman has completed his National Pro Board Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, Fire Officer 1, Fire Officer 2, Fire Officer 3. Mike Norman has always dedicated himself and his organization to training, and I'll say safety in there as well, and holding the bar high. In addition, during his tenure as chief, he has worked to secure well over a half a million dollars in grants for the fire company equipment and operations. He's been responsible for all the new fire apparatus in Manoa Fire Company over the last 20-some years. Now, the, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we extend our best wishes to you and all and your family in your future endeavors. Proclaim this 13th day of November, the Township of Haverford, Board of Commissioners. Chief, congratulations. <laughs> We also have a small token of our appreciation there. And I know you're All right. A couple of people I want to thank tonight. Uh, my wife, Liz, who's put up with this for 42 years. Uh, the grandkids who've learned how to go to the firehouse and find the candy machine. My daughter-in-law, Kristen, and my son, who's taking over as chief of the department. I'm stepping down two seats. I'll be allowed to go to fires still as an assistant chief. And now I can pack up, John. <laughs> Trust me, I can still do it. I'd like to thank the commissioners for their cooperation over the years. 
and also the manager, Mr. Gentile. Uh, we've known each other for a long, long time, and it's always been, you know, good working with Larry and Chief Viola, who, like I, wore two hats for a long time. I finally gave that up five years ago, John. I don't know when they're going to tell you you got to go, but. <laughs> I look forward to still working with you on the fire grounds and hopefully not in the police side. But thank you very much to the township and everyone who's here tonight, including other members of the Haver Township Bureau of Fire. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Liz. Take about a one minute break to let the firemen out. Thank you. Next on our agenda is Commissioner Committee updates. Are there any committee updates from any members? <coughs> Being none, we'll skip to the Township Auditor update. I reviewed the expenditures and, <clears throat> and the warrants. I found no irregularities, and all my questions have been satisfactory answered. I've also audited the Philadelphia Eagles, and I can't explain what the heck they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> At this time, we'll have our citizens forum. It's registered speakers, which we have one. Uh, Nicole McLean. We will when the chief gets back here. He's out taking pictures. So. Oh, pass them down. Oh, okay. Thank you. Like being a student. Want me to wait for him to come? No, you're good. Okay. Okay. Um, read this because it's just easier for me. The Haverford Reserve Dog Park is reported to be one of the most used parks in the township. The HRDP was established in 2010 as part of the rec recreational improvements to the former Haverford State Hospital site. It occupies a large area on a slope extending between the Children's Freedom Playground and the entrance to the trail. I forgot to tell you my name and my address. Do I need to do that? Uh, we'll, we'll get to the end. Um, the area is fenced in an appropriate manner for a dog park. However, the sloping ground it occupies is sufficient enough that a material amount of erosion has occurred over the past eight years since the park was opened. The problem is twofold. The high use of the park by running and playing dogs has killed the grass cover, and with no grass cover, the slope erodes with every water event, making the slope worsen, causing gullies, exposing rocks, buried trash, and debris, including broken glass, which is hazardous to the playing dogs and their owners. The HRDP board would like to partner with the township to hire a landscape engineer to study the problem and make a recommendation on how the erosion can be abated and corrected. Going forward, once the erosion problem is addressed, the HRDP board can consider the best and most cost-effective way to manage turf concerns at the park. We have met with an artificial turf company who has supplied the turf to several parks in Philadelphia, including dog parks. While this would be a costly endeavor, it is one of, it is one of several solutions we've been considering. But we are at a point where we need a professional to help guide us. We've looked at keeping the ground cover as natural grasses, such as zoysia grass, or the possibility of building tiered terraces. We look forward to working with the township officials on the best way forward for one of our best parks and assets to the township. We presented this proposal to the Parks and Recreation Board asking for their support in this endeavor, and it is our hope that we can count on you, our commissioners, to do the same. Our first step would be to ask each of you to reach out to your constituents to see if there is any landscape engineers who might be able to help us at a reduced cost or no cost, which of course is the best. Um, so um, I was hoping that we'd have a couple of other people here. David Tinch has worked with 
uh, with Tim Denny and, um, and Matt uh, at the dog park. Uh, they've done a great job. We are just, we're thrilled with the park and whatnot. Um, we're just, and, and Tim agrees, we're at a point where we need to do something more substantial to fix the problem at the dog park. So the, like I said, the first step is to, we're reaching out to the commissioners and asking each of you if you could reach out to your constituents, you know, maybe via email, and ask if there's somebody out there that has this kind of experience, a landscape engineer type person, who could do this for us at a, like a no cost or reduced cost. Okay. We have, you know, we've been doing fundraising. We do fundraising all the time, uh, in fact, uh, we've been selling chances for a, um, uh, uh, not a raffle, but donations for a fall basket. And uh, before we leave tonight, we'd like to ask one of the commissioners to pull the winning ticket for us because we've been building up to it. So um, that's all I had to say. Does, do you have any questions? Any questions from the board? I'll make, since we have a late meeting, I'll make a comment tonight. Uh, we have, obviously our township engineer has resources that probably could do the project at a cost to the township. But I also, what comes immediately to mind is Penn State's agronomy program has a lot of internships that supply typically golf courses. Uh, but from what I've heard, there just aren't enough intern positions and maybe we could some find, somehow get an intern position to do an agronomy and a public parks program to work with not only your, the dog park project, but maybe some of the renovations at, at our other parks uh, mm -hmm. so that they could spend uh, a summer or get an intern uh, partially, so if I'll ask the staff, Larry and, and Tim, if they could if they could look at the Penn State program, because uh, it's a very it's one of the top programs in the country. Uh, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. We have we have um, worked with the I think we've we've been in touch with the township engineer and uh, it, they're they're kind of at a at a loss as well. That's right. Why. So I think that's one thing we can do. But certainly I'll speak for all the commissioners. We'll all send it out in our emails if there's any landscape engineers or architect firms that. Yeah, want to volunteer. And in turn, that would be great too. But so. yeah, somebody that's in a professional degree. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And for the record, my name is Nicole McLean, and I live at 225 Ivy Rock Lane. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you for all you do out there. Uh, that's the only registered speaker we have. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the board on an agenda item? There being none, that closes the citizens' forum. I'd ask the police chief to come up and give his crime update at this point. The police department report for the month of October. Criminal arrests, we have 36. Juvenile arrests, 6. 253 traffic citations, 18 non-traffic citations, 250 written warnings, 45 uh, parking tickets, and 275 automatic parking tickets from the meter officers. Uh, we had two robberies, uh, one in uh, Bailey Park where a juvenile was arrested, and one, uh, obviously, 130 North Eagle Road, Sandander Bank, which I reported on last uh, month, and the suspect was arrested in Philadelphia after committing several robberies. We had uh, three burglaries, uh, uh, all businesses, um, uh, two pickpockets uh, from the Giant store on 116 Township Line and Panera Bread. Um, both of these reports are being investigated together as video obtained from the stores and indicates the sub su suspects are similar as well as possibly involved in other incidents throughout uh, Montgomery County. <laughs> uh, we only had 11 thefts from autos this month, which I'm happy to report is down, but as you know, it goes up and down. Hopefully people are starting to listen lo and locking their cars. Uh, on October 3rd, we arrested a homeless male on the P&W uh, platform, and on uh, October the 10th, three suspects were arrested in Radnor, Radnor Township. Uh, during a vehicle stop up there, and they have been charged with multiple thefts by Radnor uh, Township and Haverford Township. We have four bicycle thefts in the uh, month of October, and K-9 usage, we have six K-9 usages uh, uh, for the month of October also. That's my report. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for the police chief? Thank you. Uh, item seven is the approval of minutes. Mr. D'Amelio? I would uh, like to approve the regular meeting minutes of October 9th, 2018. Second. Motion made and seconded. Mr. Siegel. Any questions, corrections? I have had one. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Yes. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? 
Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. McGarry. Yes. Dr. Hart. Yes. Mr. yes. Item eight is the approval of warrants. Okay, motion to approve the following warrant, 11-2018, totaling $6,551,007.29. General and sewer warrant for October 18, 2018, in the amount of $674,173.57. General and sewer fund payroll, November 1st, 2018, in the amount of $625,090.28. General fund disbursement 11 2018 in the amount of $3,105,123.60. Sewer fund disbursements 11 2018 in the amount of $283,237.08. Community development block grant fund disbursement 11 2018 in the amount of $110,560.48. Capital Projects Fund Disbursement 11 2018 in the amount of $265,318.95. Debt Service 2013 Go Issue Principal and Interest in the amount of $416,041.26. Debt Service 2014 Go Issue Principal and Interest in the amount of $384,158.75. Debt Service 2016, Go Issue, Principal and Interest in the amount of $357,391.25. Debt Service 2018, Go Issue, Principal and Interest in the amount of $320,621. Credit Card Statement Ending October 27, 2018 in the amount of $9,291.07. I'm not trying to take Larry Holmes's job away from him. He can have it back. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Motion made and seconded by Mr. Oliva. That was impressive. It was. And for those that I saw some questions, the go issue is general obligation issue for those that are interested. Any questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item nine, business tax collection agreement. Mr. President. Mr. Siegel. Motion to reappoint Tri-State Financial Group LLC of Bridgeport, Pennsylvania as administrator and collector of the township's business taxes in accordance with the township's ordinance for a two-year term ending December 31st, 2020. Second. Motion made and seconded by Mr. McGarity. Any questions for our Director of Finance on this to renew all the agreement? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mr. Oliva. Yes. Mr. McCluskey. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item 10, Ordinance P-20-2018. Yes, Mr. President, uh, motion to adopt the second reading of Ordinance Number P-20-2018, further amending and supplementing Chapter 126, Parks, Playgrounds, and Township Property, Article 1, Public Parks and Playgrounds, and this relates to the Coopertown uh, Playground specifically. Second. Motion made and seconded by Mr. Oliva. Any questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? <coughs> yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item 11, Ordinance P21-2018. It's number P21-2018, motion to adopt second reading of Ordinance P21-2018, Authorizing the installation of traffic restrictions on the following highways. Special purpose parking zone in front of 9 Strathmore Road. Parking of all commercial vehicles prohibited at all times. Columbia Road, both sides from West Manoa Road to, to a point 400 feet north thereof. Second. Motion made in second. It's, and that was the parking of all vehicles, not just commercial vehicles on Columbia? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just to clarify. Any other questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item 12. Mr. President? Mr. Siegel. 
Motion to adopt resolution 2106-2018 announcing a public hearing to be held on Monday, December 3, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. in the commissioner's reading, meeting room for the purpose of considering an amendment to its zoning chapter by reclassifying the zoning classification of a portion of the property known as DC Folio number 22-09-00094-00. Jazz 00, 599 Glendale Road from ROS Residential Open Space District to R4 Low to Medium Density Residential District. Second. Motion made and second. Any questions or comments on this? A change to, uh, that's the recreation center down there, is that right? That's and that's correct. changes to maybe get housing in there? Yes, it changes, it changes right now, it's zoned recreational open space. And what this does is it changes us back to low to medium R4, which is uh, consistent with the rest of Glendale Road there. Good. Okay, Bill. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes. I am 13. Resolution 2108-2018. Mr. President? Yes. Motion to adopt resolution number 2108-2018, authorizing the Township of Haverford to close out grant project BRC-TAG-20-75, the Community Conservation Partnerships. Second. Motion made and seconded by Mr. Lewis. This is kind of a formality to close out the, the grant. And please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Waxler? Yes. Item 14 is contract awards, public works. Uh, public works department removal of leaf material. Motion to, it, to award a two-year contract for the 2018, 2019, and 2020, re removal of leaf material to American Blossoms, uh, Biosource. Biosource and compost. Skip back Pennsylvania in the amount of $20.50 a ton, submitting the only responsible bid. Second. Motion made and seconded by Mr. Oliva. Any questions? Larry, how does that compare to the last contract? Uh, $3 a ton uh, more. But uh, I mentioned this is the, uh, the first increase we've had um, in several years as far as uh, collecting the leaves. And about how many tons do we... Any idea? Uh, I don't recall. Amy may have that. Actually, I did look it up before the meeting. It's about the township does about 1,700 tons of leaves. Okay. Larry, just because it's the time frame, do you, can we can we sort of discuss um, how the how the township comes up with the time frame that we do collect leaves, just to inform the citizens again that there there's certain limitations that we have in terms of the collection with the it's, trucks. Certainly, there's there's limitations on. It's either they go into the trash stream or uh, there we deal with um, um, the company that comes and collects them right now and then transports them all the way to uh, sometimes somewhere in the facility of the Pottstown where they actually do the composting of the leaves there. And this is a significant savings as to compared with the trash. Oh, significant, yeah. certainly, yeah. I mean, it, we're looking at uh, um, $20.50 20 a ton uh, compared to uh, fifty fifty five dollars a ton, which will it, it be? In addition to that, it's not only you're paying the uh, tipping fee, but you got to remember that if we were taking uh, these leaves to the county dump site, you'll be tra transporting them all the way to Highland Avenue in Chester, um, and that it, there's that's thousands of dollars. I had done a uh, PowerPoint a number of years ago that for the cost savings that uh, by doing leaves internally, we save about $185,000 a year doing it this way compared to, to bringing them by ourselves. Uh, so you lose productivity, um, you're, lo you're wasting gas, uh, carbon discharge, and um, uh, vehicle maintenance. So it's, uh, this is pretty much um, a very good plan other than doing it yourselves, which is not an option for us anymore. Any other questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes. Uh, EP Grant Award Purchases Recreation. One, one above that, Jim. Pardon? Salt. 
Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <coughs> Motion to award the Solar Salt Contract to Chemical Equipment Labs Incorporated, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, in the amount of $57.17 a ton for the 2018-2019 winter season, submitting the lowest responsible bid. Motion, Motion made and seconded by Mr. Siegel. Any questions on this contract? I'll kind of ask the same question Dr. Hart is. How much do we use? Uh, it's, it was $69 a ton uh, last year, so there's a, it's a slight Thanks. increase. What solar salt is, solar salt is uh, a little bit different than the, the uh, road salt that we put down. Um, we used a solar salt, which is a white, soft type salt. <laughs> we use that to make our brine. Uh, so don't, we don't use as much of it. Uh, but it's it's a better product when we uh, we, we mix it in the machines. Um, it's clean and uh, that that what makes the brine. We again are the only town in Delaware County that uh, that has a brine machine. Uh, we partnered with Marple uh, and then a few years ago Mar uh, Upper Darby Township. So we kind of split the uh, the user fee between the three townships. Um, and then any any uh, brine that's used. Um, as we make the solar salt, that, that fee is, is uh, shared amongst Marple Township and Upper Darby. Great. Thank you. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Okay, DP Grain and <coughs> Award Purchases. Recreation Department Recycling Truck. Motion to authorize the purchase of one 2018 Ford F-650 diesel regular cab and chassis from Hyundai Ford, Mannheim, Pennsylvania, under CoStars 25-006 in the amount of 65000 and one 2018-8 yard recycling body from Grand Turk Equipment Company, Bridgeport, PA, under CoStars 25-46 in the amount of $41,703.94. Second. Second. Second, Dr. Hart. Um, that, they spelled that incorrectly. It's not with a Y. Hondru is the name of the Ford dealership. Okay. It's H-O, it's not H-Y. Okay, we'll make that change. Motion okay. Made. Second. Any questions? <clears throat> I'm sorry, who seconded that? I apologize. I did. Right. Is this replacing a truck or is this? It's, it's uh, we get one every year and this is a, a, a grant that Mrs. Cugini works with Mr. Doherty, was able to secure. Uh, Amy, do you recall the exact amount for the entire grant that we received? I think it was 284,000 that were awarded for. It was approximately at 275, yeah. 280, something yep. like that. The reason why we order, this is a, a grant money that we will spend in 2019. We order it uh, now because we won't see this truck until about this time next year. Thank you. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes. Sanitation recycling truck. Motion to authorize the purchase of one 2020 International HV 607 cabin chassis from GI Sare, Conchahawken, PA, under CoStars 25-017 in the amount of $100,709.60 and for one 2018-20 yard recycling body from Grand Turk Equipment Company, Bridgeport, PA, under CoStars Co 25-046 in the amount of $76,752.25. Second. Motion made and second. Any questions on this one? Again, it's part of the same grant. Yes, sir. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item 15 is a continuation. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the board on any item? New business. Any new business by any commissioner? Other business. Mr. D'Amelio? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> First, I, I would like to thank everyone in the township um, that expressed condolences um, on the, regarding the passing of my mom. 
I, uh, I appreciate the many cards, the letters, the prayers, the emails, the food that you dropped off. Um, I want to thank this board and my colleagues for those that came to my mother's viewing and those that sent cards. I want to let this board know I, I really appreciate it. Uh, it meant a lot. It meant a lot to me and my family. Um, Larry, uh, I want to thank you for everything that you did and in coming with the chief. Chief Iola, thank you so much for coming as well. Tim Denny was there. Thank you, Tim, and recreation. Um, so many different department heads came as well on the township. Um, it just, just was amazing um, to me and my family, the amount of uh, support that we received. And, and I thank you so much for, um, for everything you did and everyone in the township and in the first ward. That's all I can say on that. It, uh, it was in incredible. Um, I want to thank the Kelly Music for Life um, for the uh, Italian festival. Uh, they, I was the Grand Marshal. Unfortunately, during that time, I couldn't stay all day. I was able to be there in the morning. And uh, obviously, cause, because of my mom's illness, I had to, to leave days. But uh, it was a great event, and uh, a lot of people told me how much they enjoyed it. The food was great, the entertainment was fantastic, and uh, like the Iris Festival, it was just so well run by Tom Kelly, and I thank him and his organization so much. I, I, I urge everyone to support that organization as much as they can because it's a, it's a gem in this township. Um, I want to thank the First Ward residents that came out for the October 24th meeting that I could not attend. And thanks to Larry and, and Bob Kane for filling in for me and the chief. Um, I, I thank State Senator Dalen Leach, who I had invited, um, and State Representative Jamie Santora. Obviously, there were some state issues um, that we wanted to discuss, and one of them was the 476 on Westchester Pike Corridor, um, where we're, we're obviously uh, there's a lot of construction going on because of the, um, the development there. And recently I sent out an email uh, that I had received from Larry because of closures uh, this week. So uh, I just want to remind the residents that on Monday today through Saturday, November 17th from 9 a.m. to 3, uh, the, I think there's going to be a single lane I'm sorry? Just lane closures. Lane closures, and, and I think there's even going to be a single lane. So again, you're advised to, to make extra time when traveling through that work area, and uh, of course the schedule is weather dependent. But uh, in the past, uh, we met with PennDOT, Dan Siegel and I, we were there, Mario was there, Larry was there, uh, Benoni was there, and the chief was there regarding that intersection. And we're still trying to obtain funding uh, through, uh, with Dale and Leach's leadership, we're trying to obtain funding to, uh, to make even more improvements there. And so we're hoping that in the near future, we're gonna hear something uh, soon. Am I correct, <coughs> there, Mr. Siegel? That's my understanding from Dale and Leach's office, yes. They're hopeful that the funding will be in the 2019 state budget. Right. And as soon as we know what that is and when it comes through, we'll certainly pass it on to the residents because that will act, you know, obviously be a, a real plus for uh, our area, mine, Dan's, and Mario's, because of the amount of traffic that um, obviously is backed up there. And with the development coming in, we're really concerned about that even, even more. So uh, we're working on it. We haven't forgotten about it. And we, we ask for your patience and understanding. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Bielian. So I just believe uh, working off of what Steve said that uh, it's a five million dollar project to um, at at the at Lawrence Road there right right where um, in right as you cross over into Marple Township um, that lane will continue through um, and so traffic won't have to stop at Lawrence and and Westchester Pike and continue on to the Blue Route as you're going. Um, uh, northbound on the Blue Route, um, off of uh, Westchester Pike, going westbound. Um, hope, you know we're we're very hopeful um, that that that'll happen. So um, I also want to thank uh, or want to say uh, 
enjoy your Thanksgiving. Um, it's uh, one of my favorite holidays um, when family and, and friends come around, and uh, so enjoy them. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. McCluskey. Um, briefly, I just want to remind everyone that on December 1st, uh, Parks and Recreation will have their uh, seventh annual chili trail run that will happen in the trails behind um, the, the Crec. Um, it's a great event. Hopefully it won't be too cold, but uh, if anybody can come out, you should. It should be fun. Um, tomorrow night, the Human Relations Commission is holding a unconscious bias workshop in, in this building at 7 o'clock. So if anybody's available to attend, uh, it should be a good event. And I just want to remind uh, all residents, uh, regardless of talents or skills, um, that the board is accepting applications to serve on our various boards and uh, commissions or committees. Um, there's information on the website, and the, those, those applications are due uh, this Friday, November 16th. It um, doesn't have to be formal. Uh, just a letter of interest and a resume is, is sufficient, uh, but it is due this Friday, uh, November 16th, and we would certainly encourage everyone uh, to, to apply. Um, echo the comments of uh, Mario regarding a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope everyone has some time to spend with friends or family. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Siegel. Uh, yeah, first on December 8th um, from 9 to noon, it's a Saturday, I'll be sponsoring another shredding event. Uh, it'll be held at, the, at uh, Direct Paint and Collision at the intersection of Eagle Road and Hillcrest. That's open to anyone. Up to four boxes of material will be securely uh, shredded at that event. I want to turn my focus, though, to something far more serious and far more personal. No tragedy has impacted me as personally as the shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. Having experienced anti-Semitism as well as what I would call an awareness, a lack of awareness, often characterized as anti-Semitism, I recognize the dangers of hate and the need for each of us to embrace the differences that make our country and our community unique. I want to point out two very different examples. I met Mr. Gentili and Mr. Wexler in 2007 after this board, I was not a member then, held um, a meeting on Passover, one of the holiest days on the Jewish calendar. I contacted them and recognized that it was probably a lack of awareness and was not anything intentional. And in fact, that was the case. And ever since, even before I was a commissioner, even before I was ever running, uh, their offices in East Cugini have worked assiduously to assure that we don't have those types of conflicts. On the other hand, from approximately 2008 to 2018, I, along with another member of this board and another township official, were subject to what I would call a combination of hate that was mixed with mental illness, alcoholism, and further fueled to a certain extent by anti-Semitism and other hatred separate. During that period of times, I could not attend religious services because of my fears that this individual uh, would follow me and my family to services and that God forbid such an event would occur. It took years, it took this police department, its detectives, a long time working very hard until the gentleman who terrorized me and my family and others for almost a decade was finally put in jail for 10 years. Um, and it's people like that who can lead to the types of shootings that happened in Pittsburgh and as well as those elsewhere. But the shooting in Pittsburgh just struck me more personally and reminded me of the Hebrew phrase, kulanu biachad, which means we should all be as one. And in the context of American society, the place <coughs> where my grandparents came, they gave up everything in order to come here. It means that we must all be one as Americans. There's been a recent focus in this township on the issues of race, religion, and intolerance. 
I have not commented on them because some of the reports and the conclusions expressed in those reports differ from those I've reached after living here for 32 years, serving as a commissioner for 10 of those years. My conclusion is that Haverford Township is a wonderful place to live, to raise a family, and operate a business, all of which I'm proud to do and have done. But it doesn't mean that we can't do better. Indeed, we can and we must do better, and that's why I'm speaking tonight. As a community, we must be more aware of our neighbors and our friends and welcome all who come here, regardless of race, religion, marital status, sexual preference. As a community, this township must do better and its community organizations must do better to be aware of and respectful of each of us and the beliefs and the traditions that we each bring to this township. In other words, and most importantly, we must strive to be more inclusive. That means that, as the Supreme Court has repeatedly affirmed, government must avoid active involvement in religious activities. That doesn't mean, and to the contrary, it affirms that we as a township must recognize and respect the beliefs and traditions of our entire community, not just the majority. We should all be as one, as Americans. Recently, we haven't been as aware and inclusive and respectful of the beliefs of others. Two township-related events, one in 2017 and one just days ago, included religious rituals. I attended the 2017 event. It was an event very important to me, unaware that a religious ritual was to be part of the event. I did not attend the other recent event because I was aware of and felt uncomfortable attending that event because I felt out of place because of the religious ritual involved. President Wexler reminded community groups last week about religious holidays when scheduling events, for which I thank him. I also want to thank this board and the members at that time who came to my defense when I was the subject of what was a perceived anti-Semitic comment during a meeting a few years ago. Their defense of me demonstrated more to me than words will ever convey. And to those board members who are here and were here, I thank you. In conclusion, I'm reminded of an excerpt from the letters from an American farmer that was written in 1782 by J. Hector St. John Crevcourt, who wrote these words in 1782. What then is the American, the new man? He is either a European or the descendant of a European, hence that strange mixture of blood which you will find in no other country. I could point out to you a family whose grandfather was an Englishman, whose wife was Dutch, whose son married a French woman, and whose present four sons now have four wives of different nations. He is an American who, leaving behind him all his ancient prejudices and manners, receives new one from the new mode of life he has embraced, the new government he obeys, and the new rank he holds. He becomes an American by being received in the broad lap of our great alma mater, here, individuals of all nations are melted into a new race of men whose labors and posterity will one day cause great changes in the world. Americans are the Western pilgrims who are carrying along with them that great mass of arts, sciences, <coughs> vigor, and industry, which began long since in the East. They will finish the great circle. The Americans were once scattered all over Europe, here they are incorporated into the, one of the finest systems of population which has ever appeared and which will hereafter become distinct by the power of the distinct climates they inhabit. The American ought therefore to love this country much better than that wherein either he or his forefathers were born. Here the rewards of his industry follow with equal steps the progress of his labor. His labor is founded on the basis of nature and self-interest and it want a stronger allurement. The tragedy in Pittsburgh is a reminder that together we can help shine a light on the path to peace and security. 
as one inclusive community that recognizes, celebrates, and respects the unique differences that make this township and this whole area a wonderful community. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Lewis. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just one item uh, related to the Ardmore Avenue Bridge Project. Um, some update, updated information from PennDOT. Um, the bid package has been uh, advertised uh, with a bid opening scheduled for December 6th in Harrisburg uh, with an anticipated uh, notice to proceed as of January 22nd, 2019. In reality, that won't happen because the utilities um, will not be moved prior to that date. So more likely than not, the, the actual closing of the bridge will not happen until sometime in the spring of 2019. Um, and Commissioner McCluskey and I will be hosting a joint meeting, a public meeting here in this room uh, on February 20th, is that correct? Uh, seven o'clock. Uh, so I. it's, I'm sorry? As will I be. Oh, great, great. And, and Commissioner Siegel as well. Um, so we'll welcome members of the public. Uh, we'll have um, all the stakeholders here for that meeting, uh, including hopefully Larry, you can be here, and uh, our police chief um, and uh, PennDOT <laughs> and the contractor, and we'll be able to present to the public the project and hopefully have questions answered and concerns addressed. So they have a, a required completion date uh, on this project of May 29th, 2020. So we'll see uh, based on what happened with the College Avenue Bridge. I'm not so sure that's gonna happen, but- Just don't um, hold your breath. Let's, let's, let's hope that um, with moving the utilities prior to closing the bridges, um, we're gonna save a lot of time there. So um, anyway, um, that's all I have for that for Ardmore Avenue, and just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner McGarry. I first of all, I, I do have a list here for toys for Tots. Kevin, do you know anything about the uh, Foley? They have that turkey trot over at Annunciation. Yeah, the turkey trot for uh, Cardinal Foley is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. The Saturday after Thanksgiving is the. And it, it takes. It's place. a race, right? Yeah, and it takes place. It starts at the uh, Annunciation Church Hall. Yeah. Okay, Annunciation uh, Church will have a, a race over there benefiting the Foley School uh, for the kids. Uh, th this is for the, uh, the Toys for Tots. And basically, this is hopefully another great year. Uh, and I want, want everybody to be aware that we have bins located right here in this township building, downstairs in the police station, the Community Recreation Environmental Center up at the Creek. Uh, right here at the stadium, also inside the stadium, the Haverberger has a bin there. Over in Brookline, we have the, the gym in Brookline. We have the Ivy Inn, which uh, basically they do a great deal because they have the shuffleboard contest in there. And to enter the shuffleboard, you must bring a toy for the kids. And that's great. And J.D. McGillicuddy's on Brookline Boulevard. We also have Dan Siegel's Law Office at 66 West Eagle Road. Mainline Health and Fitness at 931 Haverford Road. Across the street is Sweeney Todd's Barbershop at 923 Dar Darby Road. Right behind us at the Wawa on Manoa Road. Uh, I know a, a year or two ago when I went out to uh, Ridley to the uh, Marine Barracks when we had a lot of toys that came in late, uh, they had told us that Haverford Township brings in more toys for the kids than anywhere in Delaware County. And I'm certainly hoping that we can keep that up, that effort to give these toys to the kids for a wonderful Christmas time. So uh, that and the uh, also the uh, ALS for Bowie Lake was very successful at Haverford School, or Haverford College, I should say, and that was very successful. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Dr. Hart. Yes. Um, Parking at SEPTA stations has been an issue in Haverford Township um, probably since Jimmy was driving his Model T to the Beechwood station. That's right. <laughs> uh, we got some good news. Uh, Senator Dalen Leach's office helped us get a half million dollar grant. Um, we're going to be able to build a parking lot that will accommodate somewhere 20, 22 cars at the um, 
base of Mill Road and, and Karakong. And an added benefit to that is we'll be able to put some sidewalks in, which will help pedestrians who are going to the Karakong pool and to the ball fields down the road. Um, on the topic of cars, uh, uh, numerous complaints in the last month about cars speeding and failing to stop at stop signs on a lot of residential streets, um, especially Farwood and Powder Mill. Um, this happens when uh, these are bus stops for kids. Uh, before we have a tragedy, I just would, you know, remind people, slow down, take your time, um, it would, uh, obey the, the uh, traffic laws, and in, 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 especially in the residential areas. Um, as many of you know, there was a house fire um, in the 8th Ward. One of my neighbors, um, Roseanne McLaughlin, uh, lost her life. Miss um, McLaughlin was a longtime Haverford resident, um, a beloved um, school nurse at the Overbrook School for the Blind. Uh, thankfully, her daughter and grandson uh, were rescued. Um, I do want to just thank it was a, uh, the police department, the EMS services, and especially our five volunteer fire services uh, really put a great effort in that night. It was torrential rains. They were out there for hours. Um, and also thank the neighbors. Uh, they've really stepped up to support um, her daughter Casey and the grandson, um, both financially and, and uh, just in any way possible. I, it makes me proud to be a part of this uh, neighborhood and this township. Uh, people really stepped up a great deal. Um, and that's all I have. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Chief, you want to say something? Commissioner, if we could add uh, the off-duty upper door police officer, Mike D. Horatius, who lives in the 8th Ward, made a valiant effort to try and rescue her and did uh, help the uh, daughter and the grandson off the roof. And I hope in the future meeting we can honor him. So, Not a problem. And I, I mean, your officer, the first on the scene, was also there. He also made an effort, too. I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's very inspiring to see the dedication, not only of your police officers who usually get there first, but then... As Dr. Hart pointed out, the volunteers that, that arose and, and the number of people that showed up uh, and, and left their families to show up there. It's, it's truly inspiring. And I, I think that's part of the reason why we honor somebody like Chief Norman had served for since 1965 and as a volunteer, not a paid person. So, so thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hart. Thank you, Chief. From the Ninth Ward, I have our, my ward meeting is in conjunction with the Hilltop Civic Association meeting this Thursday, November 15th at 7 p.m. at the Bonaire Fire Hall. So anybody has any topics, please feel free to come by, address them. I will address anything and get answers for you. Um, Jimmy, thank you for the Toys for Tots, and let's thank Gloria as well, spearheads that have, uh, effort for the township here, as, along with you and, and Fran. Uh, also, the last thing, we talked about Senator Leach getting grants. I'd like to publicly thank Representative Santoro for his hard work over the last four years. Uh, he was on the short end of the election this week. Uh, past week, and uh, I'd like to thank all the residents that came out in bad weather to uh, record numbers for the voting. But specifically, I'd like to thank Jamie Santoro for being our state representative, representative of both Steve's ward and my ward. And when you talk about grant money that's brought in, he's he's done yeoman's effort uh, in for not only our two wards, but for the entire township and being crossing the aisle and working with Governor Wolf and to Senator Leach on all these grants. So uh, I congratulate Jamie. He was very uh, very humble in his defeat. And he wishes well to uh, Mr. Zabel, who's going to be our new representative. So that's all I have at this time. I'd entertain a motion for adjourn. adjourn. So moved.